trust you well. Now, uh, public transport in the city is a very essential service uh, and it's a very necessary input in the development process of a nation. And uh, last week we saw what happened when matatus were banned from the CBD. Many people really struggled and um, the ban that came as a surprise to many because it has been said over time. But now it happened that very day. Now, do you think the decision uh, to ban matatus from the CBD uh, was necessary and was it a good idea, Leken? Uh, thank you so much, Dan. Uh, I think the, the decision by the county government of Nairobi to ban matatus out of uh, the CBD was uh, completely inappropriate. Because mm -hmm. one, uh, it was not timely. Right. Uh, the, bus, the, bu the terminus were not accommodating all the matatus mm -hmm. at the time frame that was given out. Yeah. So I guess it was inappropriate for me. And uh, the county government, I think that's the reason the county government had to rethink the decision mm -hmm. uh, within uh, 24 hours. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Daniel, uh, if you could hold your mic. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think this idea was a good one for that case? Thank you, Hilary, for um, inviting us after a long time here. Um, You're welcome. First of all, let us condone with the families of the people who have lost their lives in the grisly accidents that we've just seen uh, over the media um, and on the news. But coming back to the discussion, with the gist of this discussion today, I think uh, the decision that was made on third, I think it was on third of this month, mm. uh, it, it's a decision that I would call more of reactionary. The city is an urban center that is an economic nerve, not only in Nairobi or in Kenya, but an East African hub of development. We have Uhuru Highway as one of the main connector roads um, uh, that is spanning across Africa. And so there is a need for Nairobi City County government to honestly plan on how we have a massive transit mm -hmm. in transportation of people who are coming to town. But one of the things that I see is that that decision was made in reverse. Mm -hmm. I would call, I would want to see private vehicles banned from accessing the CBD because the number of their carriages compared to the public service transport is equally low. Mm. And secondly, because most of Kenyans and most of average Kenyans are using public transport. And you saw the decision uh, that was made and how the ripple effect it had, even mm. before the governor would rescind mm -hmm. his, his decision. You could actually see from the media, right. or from you yourself, you were doing the coverage, you could actually see the ramification of that kind of decision. Very true. Yeah. All right, we'll be listening into what the governor said after seeing what happened. Uh, but then, uh, do you think matatus are the reason as to why we have congestion or traffic rather in the CBD? Like in? Uh, I wouldn't think in that line. Uh, one of the, qu the things bringing congestion in the city mm -hmm. are actually the private, uh, the private car owners. The city because I uh, in this country almost uh, everyone owns a car mm -hmm. because you find that the number of uh, vehicles in, in the city as mm -hmm. compared to the number of people brings that congestion sure. so I believe that it is not it is not actually the matato sector with proper planning and proper infrastructure mm -hmm. on the, the bus terminus and uh, uh, other sectors it will ease the congestion in the city and yeah Mm -hmm. Having having agreed that uh, matatus they don't cause the traffic that we normally see, but then there there are these rogue matatus that they will drop and pick passengers everywhere. I have personally seen uh, if you go to Thika Road, yeah. these buses from Githurai uh, reversing on the highway, mm -hmm. and then you there you want to make sure you not caught into trouble. But then this is something that has been happening. Uh, do you think do you think burning matter to the CBD will solve the problem? And if it is the personal vehicles like uh, Orogo you are trying to say, do you think it also again 
uh, reduce the traffic in the CBD. Uh, I want also to draw your attention. Um, you know, this was coming just a few weeks after the Ministry of Interior um, in national coordination had actually uh, bring up some measures mm -hmm. to control, uh, just to reassure that there needs to be order mm -hmm. uh, in the traffic, in the transport department. Yeah. And you could see actually um, the, the, the measures that were put and the um, the penalties they were given for breaking the rules, including right. those that you've just mentioned, mm -hmm. um, having a reverse along a highway, which is dangerous and can cause mm -hmm. a number of accidents along that. Mm -hmm. and, and so it is my belief that as we speak, um, some of us who are using public transport are actually now see there is an order mm -hmm. in which um, uh, that has been restored as so far as we use public transport. But that is not... Um, the reassurance that there are people who actually follow these laws, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. We are still having problems along with rogue matatus and the subcut. Just recently, you know, within this CBD, mm -hmm. uh, one of uh, the Nissan would just hit a police uh, vehicle and they celebrate. Mm -hmm. You know, things that were unheard of. You know, you couldn't even dare do that in our time. But right now, you could see this happening. So I think. While we are actually beginning to see one of the things as politicians, what we should be uh, really driving forward is that we have to come up with strict policies and laws as so far as for both, you know, uh, the transport people who are within the transport sector. And we are having a number of circles mm -hmm. who are operating within uh, the CBD. And I'm, I'm happy that the government has actually saw it wise right now that instead of um, dealing with, you know, a circle as a whole, sometimes you deal with the individual drivers sometimes because right. not everybody follows these laws. Sure. So I am happy that we begin to regulate. Uh, the government has actually know the importance of partnership and working in collaboration with Matatu Owners Association mm -hmm. and other associations that are affiliated towards the, the public transport. Mm -hmm. But as far as that is concerned, the current governor um, and the entire uh, uh, Nairobi City County in their campaign had actually pledged that within a number of days and this was just a hundred days within the office mm -hmm. they're actually going to organize an alternative uh, you know an alternative easy way transport so that means could we begin to see for example railway you know like a uh, train mm -hmm. uh, you know trying to make it easy for people to use alternative than matatus and matatus and matatus so that we could actually begin to ease the modalities upon which we travel in right. and outside the city all right even in their planning um they, they there are proposals the terminal that will be used from different uh, directions coming to the cbd and then there are people who will be considered and one thing i am not sure how it will work it's for the factor that has been put for the sick people uh, the disabled and the sick especially here for the sick even in queuing in a bank or any other place we know what happens mothers with children we give them priorities mm -hmm. but then it happens you will find someone coming with the same baby okay in transport it won't happen of the same mm -hmm. but then what's the criteria that will be used to to know that this person is sick they should use uh, the bus that is referring people to the cbd they can uh, on that note, I'll just want to applaud what my brother said mm -hmm. about uh, the partnerships between uh, Matatu owners and the county government of Nairobi, mm -hmm. because uh, one of the one of the sustainable goals, mm -hmm. uh, number seventeen, is uh, partnerships. Mm -hmm. I think these people can come into one common understanding and be able to put in place certain policies and even um, measures on how to curb curb what is happening uh, just recently. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, uh, well, there was uh, that meant there was a serious challenge on uh, pickpocketing a lot of uh, uh, the, the uh, public uh, passengers had a lot of issues on congestion, on mm -hmm. where they are being dropped mm -hmm. to walk all the way from town. And you find that these people they are sick people, people have their luggage, they want to transport it to town, selling, mm -hmm. and you find mamas from uh, Nyeri and central Kenya with their bags of uh, onions and even other things. And it becomes a challenge trying to ferry that thing mm -hmm. down to town, mm -hmm. almost three kilometers to town. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I think the, the county government has to come up with something so that uh, at least when there is that uh, issue, at least it can be solved. People can be, there's that movement where people are being taken, those who are sick. And now the, the challenge is identifying who is sick because some other person might come mm -hmm. and uh, faints. Drops, faints and <laughs> says I'm sick so that he can get that mm -hmm. uh, free transport to, ride right. to town. So I guess it is something that needs a lot of uh, sitting together, mm -hmm. drafting a lot of things and even collaboration on that partnership. All right, you, you just mentioned uh, free transport. Uh, will it be free, really? Mm -hmm. Or it yeah. will be a subsidized? I think it is, should be a fair subsidized thing. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. So imagine, someone, imagine someone who stays <laughs> as near as, say, Mathare, mm -hmm. or, okay, Gedurai, let me use yeah. that place. Yeah. You're coming to the CBD. You get to Ungara, uh, that's yeah. the yeah. first terminal. And then you want to get to the CBD, you can't walk. You, you paid, uh, say, 50 bob, and then you need another 20 bob or so to get mm -hmm. you to town. So it will be 70. And in other places, someone getting of to s the CBD, they will pay 70 because Muthuru is near town. Yeah. Actually, it is town. Only that uh, people are not used to the same place. Anyway, anyhow, um, Daniel, do you think having an ambition of, of or having a plan to have maybe subways trains that will come to the CBD or near Lake Railways and this other side would work? Would it be so ambitious? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's something that it's time uh, uh, has now come for us to uh, consider it. Um, not only as a Nairobi county, but also, um, you know, it's a connector with other counties as well. You know, um, uh, Machakos is nearing us, Kiambu is here, and you know, Kajiado is here. Mm -hmm. But then, if we have that inter county connection, because uh, Hillary, you know, there are some of us who reside in various counties but work in Nairobi. Yeah, and hey. go back, you know, we, we like say we stay in Nairobi. Yeah, <laughs> and you see, uh, uh, you, that is why I'm, I'm thinking that, well, we it's something that we should actually begin and, and you see there was this kind of initiative where uh there there's and i think it's still there the train from imara would actually guys would drive to uh, that side park there and take the train yeah. and come i don't know what but happened they refused to that initiative. they refused yeah. i don't there know what parking. happened to that yeah. initiative well there was there was i don't know whether there was little parking or i don't know what happened to that but i think it was something that we should actually consider to avoid mm -hmm. this kind of uh, you know s traffic snarl ups and this confusion within this city mm -hmm. but again like any other initiative somebody would always want to take advantage of the initiative you know you see right, right. even even if we talk about you know uh, um, coming up people will begin to politicize this and question right. who is now going to provide uh, you the know buses, uh, the the, 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 for the, the buses the, the buses mm -hmm. uh, somebody would even politicize now we are using national youth service buses who is gaining mm -hmm. you know in kenyan we should we are always poking holes about everything you know that benefits the citizens so i think there was an idea about uh, Namata issue, the, uh, the Nairobi uh, Metropolitan Initiative, something, mm -hmm. that actually the national government had collaborated with the county government to make it easy for Nairobians to have an organized public transport. Mm -hmm. In that, you know, there was going to be a roll up about the, the National Youth Service buses, and, and, and you see, um, these are kind of initiatives we, I think, instead of our MCAs, Mm -hmm. You know, uh, um, you know, uh, putting paper on each other's eye and fighting yeah. in the city hall. Mm -hmm. I think these are issues that they should actually begin to think about okay. instead of looking at how they would want to impeach the, the, the governor yeah. and the speaker. <laughs> I think for the benefit of Nairobians, these are our MCs should be thinking how then do we begin to ease in the traffic within? How do we begin to even support the governor? Because the governor is, 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 is you know, is a little bit reactive. Yeah. Uh, you know, making a decision without, uh, you know, uh, consultation, withdrawing a decision and then calling for a consultation. I don't know how that happens with the whole governor. Mm -hmm. But I think it, it could be important for, for him to be helped 
in terms of trying to diagnose right. the problem that is in Nairobi County. And I, 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 I know that he's trying to do something. Mm -hmm. Instead of using his own funds, like he said, mm -hmm. to make Nairobi beautiful, I think it could be important for us even to teach him how to do public management <laughs> and financial uh, <laughs> uh, benefits so that we have a beautiful city, mm -hmm. a city that is well governed, a city that there's organized transport system, mm -hmm. and a city that, that you know, uh, we, we all enjoy okay. to be in. So that is what I, I, I think uh, would help. Hillary. Mm. Yeah. Okay, as we wind up, uh, our time is running out, but still. We started late. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I'm hoping the director will be uh, generous in now. Now, uh, when, when on Monday, uh, what happened? Uh, people were congesting. I'm sure we have people who have problems that is in terms of their health. And uh, then we, you, you are told you'll be using uh, this overpass like it happened in Gara, and I'm sure uh, so many people, bad things happened, only that they can't say, or if they said it, never got to a good number. But then, if the terminals are there, is the security of the pedestrians uh, guaranteed, uh, knowing this is Nairobi? We know it very well, like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hillary saying there, we know it is Nairobi. <laughs> uh, yeah, banking on this is Nairobi, and in Kenya, people always take every opportunity. I'm sure someone making is benefited. An, an, an advantage. A whole lot. An advantage. <laughs> so I think uh, while well, there was that commotion and such things, mm -hmm. there is always pickpocketing. I mean, where people are many, congestion and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the county government, together with the national government, can mm -hmm. coordinate how, how security is enhanced in, th in this terminus mm -hmm. and making sure that. Uh, any nothing nothing any nothing fishy happens mm -hmm. in the in the bus terminals. But with a population of like say five thousand five at a given time, how do you ensure that when we rub shoulders mm. you don't go with my phone? <laughs> what, what will be the work of the security officers, Orogo? You see, our our our, our, our <laughs> statistics put it so well that one one security, security officer reports. I don't know is in charge of how many people? Probably a hundred and something. <laughs> Which which really, it's 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 an You can't manage that. Mm -hmm. One police officer, one. But then, how then? What? And this is what we're talking about. The effects of an abrupt, you know, decision mm -hmm. without consultation, mm -hmm. which I think Nairobi no longer ceases to be Nairobi. <laughs> Nairobi becomes Nairobi. <laughs> if we think that is it, it's it's something that we uh, an, a city that we thought of. Mm -hmm. Kitambo kulikuwa na hii uh, stagecoach. Very yeah, organized. Yeah. I think some of, did you use it? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. use these buses. <laughs> yeah. And those, you see, they're very organized. There's a generation that doesn't There's a generation know that doesn't yeah, yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> but then we yeah. used it. And, you know, from that, it was so organized. But I think simply because the population was a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. uh, still low. All right. right now, the dynamics of Nairobi demands for a very, very organized. It's a very uh, well planning, mm -hmm. which I also think that we are still having the plans that we have since independence. We have never revised our urban policy to that time. Right. And this is the problem that we are finding ourselves as a city. Look here. The Nairobi governor or anybody who is watching this show should tell uh, the governor right now mm -hmm. that we no longer cease to just be called a city. Mm -hmm. We have become an economic hub for East and Central Africa. Mm -hmm. Nairobi has become one of the most technological hub in mm -hmm. the East and Central Africa. Right. So mm -hmm. if we are still banking on our planning for independence, independence. it has now changed. Mm -hmm. Our security system, and I think that security is the work of the national government. Mm -hmm. But then the county has got the county as carries right. to, to complement what uh, the national government does. Right. But this depends on how then do we look at our own county mm -hmm. uh, policies. How, what, what do we have insofar as benefiting uh, the citizens is concerned when doing the public transport. Mm -hmm. But as, 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 as we are trying really to wind up on this, mm -hmm. one of the things that I uh, keep on saying, we can't keep on talking without documentation. Right. You know, mm -hmm. what? Where was this thing documented that we need to refer? Mm -hmm. Philip Kisia did something so wonderful in this city. Mm -hmm. You know, the late Gakuo did something so wonderful in this. I don't know. Which I don't know. Can't <laughs> remember Gakuo, mm -hmm. but I think by that time, even if we were struggling with some challenges, but something was working out. Right. You know, something was going on. By then, our own president mm -hmm. was 
the minister of local government. Right. When he tried to come up with these measures to ease in the traffic, Makadara MP by that time, who was he? Someone. The current governor right now, mm -hmm. ran to court, blocked the initiative. Mm -hmm. Kidero tried the same As thing. The governor, he the, tried who was the senator by that time? The governor. the governor. Right now, the governor himself has actually made sure that he is trying to come up with policies. Somebody has gone to court. And so the, the senator, senator went to court. He's now the senator. <laughs> so who it is the cycle the that will never end. <laughs> so this is why I am saying, plainly speaking, Nairobians need to actually have a very uh, open uh, public participation process. Mm -hmm. How then do we live in a city mm -hmm. and enjoy the city in the sun as we are known, mm -hmm. so that we begin to rebrand ourselves as a capital city, as a hub mm -hmm. for Eastern Central Africa, right. instead of lamenting every time mm -hmm. what is our the governor cannot say in the in the process of a Senate mm -hmm. that we are trying to make people exercise. Yeah, he Come doesn't on. want lazy Some people. people <laughs> exercise each and every day. What do we give an explanation to people who are sick? Who are sick? What do you give an explanation to grandmothers who cannot walk? Yeah. What do you give an explanation to our mothers who are depending on this fresh produce coming from coming. Thika right. to access Mudura so that we buy it? Mm -hmm. Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. This guy is Bure Kabisa. You know, some, some of these things I even don't know how to express here. Yeah. All right, all right, your points are hard. I. I, my, my director is pressing me up to finish up this Please thing. Tell him you started late. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that. And then uh, we have a show that is coming up next. We have Y Mashariki. And from the other side of the studio, I see DJ Tieska. I don't know. Uh, Tieska, you can hear me. Niaje? <laughs> Uh, he he is well he's preparing for the show and i'm hoping things will be better my name is Dereva hillary many thanks for keeping us company they have been my guest lekeno lindetti he's a political aspirant and daniel orogo political yes, thank analyst you. thank you so much gentlemen for coming have a good night enjoy your week and stay tuned for why mashariki good night